Um, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you so much for inviting us. We've had a, a great stay. Kathy was here a year and a half ago. Some of you might remember my gorgeous wife. Uh, we had a, actually, I had a Malaysian ask Kathy a few years ago, does she always travel with her father, me? And uh, she said, he's not my, he's my husband, but thank you. <laughs> I'm so young and he's so old. No, we're not that much different, actually. But uh, she's out with the children. We had a great day yesterday, and uh, I just want to thank Pastor Vincent and Glad Tidings for hosting us. We feel so cared for. You guys are very hospitable. We love your makan, your food, your, you know, I haven't had so much local here this week, but last week we were in Klang, and we had uh, a lot of lovely seafood, and uh, well, I love your food. We were here, our first visit in Malaysia, before you ask me, was in 1999. We came to Allo Star, and uh, we did a children's conference there, and we've probably been back um, uh, m more than 30 times here, KL, um, and Sabah, East Malaysia. So put up your hand if you've ever met me before. Anyone? No, no. You're all just about newbies. Great. Well, it's wonderful to be sharing a Father's Day message. I am a musician, so uh, I'm going to start in the area of my greatest comfort. I'll uh, use this one again. Yeah. And um, which would be on the keyboard. Um, I grew up, my dad speaking of Father's Day, was a butcher. And uh, I used to work at the butcher shop with my dad. And the music teacher was just around the corner. And um, she was um, 70 years old when I was 10. It's just to wake you up if you're uh, thinking of having to sleep. We're in church today. Hey, hey. At Glad Tidy. So I was an entertainer, if you didn't guess, and uh, a long, long time ago. Oh, a long, long time ago. Do you remember that? Bye-bye, Miss American Pie. No, it's okay. All right, all those uh, old... I used to work. Sing us a song, you're the piano man. Sing us a song today. Cause we're all in the mood for a melody And you've got us feeling all right And the other day I did I always think this would be a good offering song You know, money, money, money Must be funny In a rich man's world Oh, people are holding their heads uh -huh. And my wife's not here to tell me to stop All the things I could do if I had a little money in a rich man's Woo! Oh, uh, somebody took my foot pedal. Has anyone got the, uh, the uh, sustain pedal? Aha, uh -huh. it's in your handbag, isn't it? No, it's okay. And uh, I know, you, have you ever looked in a woman's handbag? It's everything. You can ask her for anything, you know. Uh, yeah, have you got a fuse? Yeah, yeah, sure, I've got somewhere. They can't find anything, but uh, it's there somewhere, you know. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and for you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. All right, that's as much as my past that you're going to hear. Thank you. Oh, sustain pedals. Who plays the keyboard? Anybody? Yeah. You know, how can you live without a sustain pedal? Um, so today, I want to talk a little bit about my journey to God. I, was, I grew up in a denominational church. I actually gave my heart in a revival in the early 70s, around um, 71, I swept through the Catholic Church in those days, gave my heart, but life, circumstance, whatever, led me away from God. I certainly wasn't founded in the Word of God. I love Glad Tidings Church, 
because you you are founded in the Word. I I mean I loved everything about my childhood. Don't get me wrong. It was uh, my dad was a great dad. He's very caring. He was actually saved, um, became a Christian, um, older in life, and uh, so he was very dedicated to God and his local church. So, but anyway, through circumstances in life. Um, I wandered away from God. By the time I was 21, I was no longer in church as such. And my dad had a massive heart attack. You know, often when, when circumstances, when tragedies happen, it seems to change the course of your destiny. For me, it was about changing the course of my mind. I thought, I saw him the night before he died. He was on his way to bed. He hadn't been well. He'd had a heart condition for many years and um, he was only 49 years old and he said, Brendan, before you go to bed, I just want to tell you one thing. God's been good to me. And I thought, that's good. That's nice. Thank you. Good night. Um, like I wasn't, uh, I wondered why he told me. But about 5 a.m. the next morning, my mum screamed out and I ran through the house my dad was in bed. He'd had a heart attack. I pulled him out of the bed and I tried to resuscitate him. The ambulance came about 15 minutes later and he was gone. And in some, something in my heart, people talk about trauma and I didn't feel traumatized, but I think from that moment on, I was, uh, I was closed. There was something in my heart that, that got hard very quickly because of that trauma. And wherever you're sitting today, you know, I believe... We're all different. You know, I'm from Australia, of course. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. But, but you know, we've all got something in common. We're, we're humans. That's one thing. We breathe the good air. We're going to live and die. One day, we'll all have to face our maker. And I believe my testimony will speak to your heart today. Oh, that's my prayer. My prayer is that in your life, that you'll have a breakthrough, that today, whatever's happened, whatever's gone down, that there'll be a softening. Over the next 10 years after my dad had the heart attack, I ended up just working pubs and clubs. I was a school teacher for a little while, um, got bored with that, decided I wanted to be a star. So I joined a theatre it was called Dracula's, Dracula Theatre Restaurant. So we would have meal and then I would do, you know, the water through the county, the Johnny Bay or whatever, you know, the prison, all that stuff, all the Blues Brothers and uh, uh, Rocky Horror. I was about as far away from church by then, as you could imagine. But I enjoyed theatre. I liked stand-up comedy. I used to take my stepdaughter by then, Elizabeth, uh, to Dracula's with me. And I've got to tell you that it was like family. You know, the people in the show, it was a small cast and we'd do shows together. And, but along the way, um, Kathy and I were married. We got married there. But um, our marriage was falling apart. Our life was falling apart. Um, and even though I knew God, there was... Something in me that was distant. Elizabeth, my stepdaughter, and we might go to my slide now, the home sweet home um, slides. Because today's message is about home sweet home. And uh, my daughter Elizabeth um, used to travel with me. And I wrote her a song when she was um, about um, nine years old, I think. Elizabeth Grace puts a smile on my face. You are older, you're still more my child. I remember the teddy you had as a babe. You are older, but still you're my child. You'll be a child in my eyes. To the day that I die, a child of the Lord through the years. 
And I wrote this song for her. There's my three grandchildren. Time flies quickly with children. Now I have three beautiful grandchildren. Isaac up the top there. He's, uh, he's a bit older now. And their dad put this together years later when we came to church. Don't you see the children are God's best gift? The fruit of the womb. His generous legacy. I'm happy to say I have a legacy now. Image and Grace, the little girl there. She uh, says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. And the bottom one, Caleb John. They named him, second name John after my name, Brendan John. I will be your God throughout your lifetime until your hair is white with age. I made you and I will care for you. I will carry you along and save you. You know, my message is that this is my legacy. So I'm giving you the, the good news at the end. Um, when I was um, working at Dracula's, as I said, our marriage fell apart to a point where, um, where our lives were separate. We're in the same house, living separately. And for me, um, for me, I, I was so hard. It was like I was like the prodigal son. I'd walked away from my father's house. I'd walked away from God. I'd spent, I had favor and good fortune when I was younger, but I left it all behind. I thought there was something more. There must be more than this. So I was pursuing all that. I had no regard for my life, for my wife, for our marriage. And by the time, by the time I hit the wall, because uh, God is so gracious, you know, it says, I will correct you. He corrects those ones he loves. He doesn't leave us there. You know, he'll let us come back to him. And I remember I spent five days. I left Kathy. The marriage was finished. I, went, I found a little library and I, I started worshipping the Lord in a way I'd never had before. I'd already pursued other things. I, was, um, I, I did a Scientology course. I did, was doing New Age, listening to tapes. I was doing everything except calling on the name of the Lord. I tried and, and there seemed to be some peace at different times, but, but there was like this missing, this vacuum. In my life, what is it? I thought it'd be performance or money or something. By the time I came to this library, I was broken. And I just started worshipping the Lord. I was crying. I was, and he gave me a song. And at the end of that five days, the song was, You pick me up when I am down. You turn my head around. No one but you, my friend, no, I'm not afraid. My night will turn to day. I love you. I love you, my Lord. And the peace of God surrounded me. I can't explain it any other way, but it does talk in the Word about the peace that passes understanding was flooding my heart and from broken desolate losing everything I owned I walked out of that library almost fully restored and there's scripture in John that talks about coming to the secret place church Malaysia daddies mummies whoever you are go to the secret place I didn't know this scripture but it says, close the door behind you and the Father who hears in secret will reward you openly. He wants to reward you today. You'll put first things first. You're in the house of God. I commend you because this is where the rubber meets the road. I went back home to Kathy to pick up a few things to leave. She didn't want anything to do with me a week before. Um, trust broken is not easily restored. And 
I went home to get a few things and she asked, could we start again? And I was, I was surprised, but in one sense, I was totally, I was changed. And I said, yes, let's start again. Cut a long story short. We were remarried in a church. I left Dracula's. Kathy left the clubs and the pubs. We stayed. Um, Elizabeth came to the wedding. And we started attending a local church. We started tithing. I read about tithing, giving 10% of my income, giving the first fruits, not just any 10%, the first, the best. And I remember we were giving 10% because I'd read about it somewhere and I, I wanted to put God first. I remember I was having a cigarette out in the garage. In those days I used to smoke, still smoke. God still loved me, but I was still one thing at a time. And I was having a cigarette and I was behind in my rents, I remember, and I saw a tile on the side of the garage, somebody had left it there, the last tenant, and it said, seek first the kingdom of God. And I went, yella. See, I got so excited, I lit another cigarette. You know what? God wasn't concerned about my cigarette smoking right then. He helped me give up miraculously a little bit later on. He was concerned with my heart. He wanted my heart after him. And I, and I wanted to put him first. So we were giving into this um, church until we got a call from the priest, actually, who said, you're giving us too much money. Nobody gives 10%. I said, really? But I want to give 10%. And he said, well, give it to somebody else. And so we started giving it to somebody else. To, I was reading like um, Norman Vincent Peale, The Power of Positive Thinking, about reading. And he said, write down scriptures. And, and so I started reading the Bible. We were, we were seeking God. Ask, seek, knock. And I just want to go to a scripture in Matthew 7. If you've got your Bibles. Um, Matthew 7, verse 7. Keep on asking, you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. And that's just not for non-believers. If you're here today, and you're seeking God. If you're a God seeker, that's for all of us. Every day of our life. One of the things I've learned is that I've got to put God first. It's like manna from heaven. The word of God. It's life to my flesh. There's a scripture straight after that for parents. And I'm thinking of dads particularly. You parents. If your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him? I was seeking God. We were doing school shows by then. We saw 140,000 children over the next five years. Our marriage, God was restoring our marriage. He was restoring our life. In 1992, we walked into a church just like this, like glad tidings. And Kathy said, we're home. And I, being a typical bloke, I thought, are we? Really? She said, Yes. This is home. This is a church. This is a family. Whether you're single, whether you're married, whether you're young, whether you're old, we're in the family of God. And Glad Tidings Church is a generational family, similar to our church where we go to. My daughter and son-in-law are the children's pastors now 
at our church. But when Elizabeth first came to church, she was rebellious. She didn't want to know anything about God. Remember, I used to take her to Dracula's. She wanted to be a waitress there. We call them Draculettes. They dress up in horrible clothes. And when she was nine and ten, she wanted to be a Draculette, not an usher in a church. So her mum, we were totally committed, 1992, went to Bible school, studied the Word of God, and Elizabeth would sit up the back. I'd be on the piano by then, leading worship, and she'd be glaring at us both, looking at her watch, saying, get on with it. She's my stepdaughter, remember? So eventually God spoke to Kathy and said, let her go. Let her go and live with her father. We weren't able to have children because I had cancer when I was 21. God healed me of cancer, but as a result, I wasn't able to have children. So she was our only child, the only one we would ever have. And she told Elizabeth in tears, God's told me to let you go, to go and live with your father. They both wept. They both cried. They both, but we were crying. We were praying. We were speaking the word. We were going into a bedroom and laying hands on a bed and praying that God touch her. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We were in a word church by then. About... Three weeks after Kathy released her, she said, are you going to live with your father? And Elizabeth said, no, nah, I don't want to do that anymore. And within the next two weeks, she'd given her heart to the Lord in church and she was filled in the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. She was 14 years old. She's 38 now. Can we go to the next slide? Thanks. There she is on, the, on your right, Elizabeth. There's Caleb, Image and Grace, the eight-year-old now. David Stennett, our son-in-law, who we met when he was 14 in church. The week after we came to church, he came. And Isaac is turning 13 next month. Praise God. They're all in the house of God. God's a restorer wherever you are. Wherever your family are, I'm standing in agreement that as you put God first, he puts you first. Kathy and I have a ministry now to the world. Can we go to the next slide? Thanks. There's some of the children we've ministered to all over the world. We were in one church for nine years, then God called us to go into all the world. We had 19 world trips. We've been to over 30 countries. We've ministered many times in Malaysia, Singapore, all over the world, America. And I just want to tell you about one little girl, Cheryl, who's the second picture on the top in the wheelchair. Cheryl is my goddaughter. And we met Cheryl in Singapore. She had a brain tumor. She wasn't well. This is... Um, uh, her mother told us that she wanted us to be her grandparents. And that day, that's when we became her grand, I became a, sorry, her godparents. We became her godparents. And as soon as we did, she said, okay, let's sing. She pulled us down and she sang a song that we wrote called, Jesus, you are my Lord. Jesus, you are my everything. Her mother would tell us whenever Cheryl was in pain, she would start singing. She would start worshipping. And maybe that's a clue for someone here. Whenever you're in pain, not just your body, but your soul, sing a new song to the Lord. Start singing. Lift up your voice. Cheryl, we were driving. We flew from Singapore to Malaysia five days later. And Cheryl moved on to heaven. She now lives, our goddaughter now lives in heaven. Soon after that, we came back to Singapore and we were with a bunch of children that knew Cheryl. They were weeping and crying and mourning. We missed Cheryl terribly. 
But one of the girls woke up. It was like she was, uh, she was weeping, like on the floor for about 45 minutes. And we said, what did you see? She said, I saw Cheryl. She's in heaven. She's beautiful. She's got beautiful hair. And, and there's, a, there's, there's a poster of, of us in her, in her mansion. And there's a poster of, of Uncle Brendan and Auntie Kathy. And says, I love my godparents. Heaven is for real. Eternity is for real. When Kathy and I started in church in 1992, we decided at age 36 and 38 that we would lay it all down for him. And particularly for children. Our vision, can we go to the next slide? I think it's the next one. Um, this, is our, this is our vision. Overflow kids, we're called. As from John 10.10, 10, he came to give us life that it would overflow. This is our home, but it's also our home studio where we shot OKTV. OK OKTV, OK we shot 10 years ago, went all over the world, TBN and UCB and and why children, people ask us, because children are our best gift. Children are the future. I don't want them to be ignorant like I was ignorant of the word. Everyone has their choices. The prodigal son grew up with a godly, in a godly home. And he still chose to walk away. I'm not saying we don't have choice. But when you know the word of God, when it's in your heart, you have understanding. In all you're getting, get understanding. And when you teach children, they'll be disciples for the whole of their life. They won't have to wait till they're 36 or 38 years old, like I was. So we're passionate about making, Jesus said, go into all the world. His one directive was, go and make disciples. So we're passionate about, I know there's a lot of good work out there, feeding and clothing, and we totally agree with all those programs, but our call is to be a voice to children and a voice for children. Go to the next slide, please. Thank you. This is a scripture, um, Philippians 2.2, 2, and it says, Fill up and complete my joy by living in harmony and being of the same mind and one purpose, having the same love, being in full accord and one harmonious mind and intention. We're in the house of God. God loves you all. Turn to somebody and says, God loves you. Welcome to the family. You're in the family. When I started coming to church, I, our pastor told us, put God first, find a home in a local church and build your life around it. And that's what we've done. And God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I want to sing you a song. Ever since I came back to God, I've been writing songs for God, and mostly from Scripture. The first children's song I ever wrote was, Every good and perfect gift comes down from heaven above. Every good and perfect gift from above. Yeah. You know that scripture in James? Kathy asked me to write a song for an offering message. There's a scripture in Ephesians. Actually, let's keep reading this together. Philippians 2 3, next verse. In the spirit of humility, next verse. Be concerned for others. Look at Christ's example. Next verse. Shrink from whatever might offend God and discredit the name of Christ. Next verse. 
Let God perfect you. He wants to perfect you. He said, I will perfect those things that concern you. Don't grumble, fault find, complain. There's wonderful scriptures. You are bright lights in this contaminated world. You offer hope to the world. Next verse. Next, yep, next slide. Living in harmony. There's our website there, theclancys.com.au. If you want to take a note, because we've got a, um, for families, for you dads and mums, there's a book called Home Sweet Home. And it's a, it's a workbook that you can work on your marriage together. You know, when Kathy and I came back together, it took a long time to build trust again. And marriage takes work. It's a wonderful work, and I love my marriage now. We've been married 32 years. Woohoo! For our 31st anniversary, I took Kathy to Las Vegas, and we saw Celine Dion. She loves Celine Dion. So I love our marriage now, but, you know, Everything takes work. Bringing up children. When Elizabeth was a teenager, people would ask me, what did you do? How did you help her after those years when she came back? I said, whenever she was ready to talk, daddies, I was ready to listen. I stopped whatever I was going to do. And she would sometimes talk for two hours. We started doing the dishes or something, and, and she would just talk about anything, about everything, about life, about what was going on. And I was ready to listen. When they're teenagers, when they're youth, it's time to stop. When they're children, you can pray for them. Speak healing over them. Prophesy over your children. Look up that book. Download that book. Because there's even keys, there's secrets, there's setting your family goals. I love my grandchildren. I love seeing them in the house of God. God's a rewarder. I will fight for my family. I will fight to keep what God has created, what He's restored. Will you fight for your family? Will you fight for your loved ones in prayer? I just want you to close your eyes right now. I'm going to sing you a song that I wrote about families. It's from Ephesians. There's a home that is lovely, a home where there's peace, a home full of laughter and joy never cease. This home is a haven, a refuge of love, a family united, Together in one sweet home. Our home wasn't always sweet. This is a faith song. Sweet home. It can be. Wherever you are, Christ will make his home in your heart today. As you trust in him, he'll guide your way. Satisfying space, live in harmony, generosity in your home. Kathy and I have been so blessed by your generosity. Sweet home, we see it as part of your culture, part of your life, in your home. See those things that are not as though they were if your home isn't sweet start finding scriptures do our 30 day devotional you'll find your home gets sweeter bring your children it doesn't have to take long turn off your iPhones stop looking at the news 
Do you have charge of your phones or do they have charge of you? Lay it down. Put first things first. I'm so pleased God has restored our marriage. He wants to restore your life. He wants the fullness of life for you. In John 10.10, 10, it says, He came to give us life that we would have it until it overflows. Praise God. Before I finish, I just want to check if you know Jesus. He makes everything new. Step one to putting God first is asking Jesus in your, into your heart. And you may be a visitor here, or you may have done it before, but you've wandered away. So in a little while, I'm going to ask you to put up your hand. You won't have to stand up or walk to the fore, front or anything, but we're going to say a prayer together. And we're going to ask Jesus into our hearts. We're going to say a prayer together. This wonderful Glad Tidings family, with Pastor Vincent, all the family who you can meet later. They want to embrace you. They want to help you. They want to empower you. They want to grow you up as a disciple. But right now, we just want to make sure that you know you're heaven bound. It says your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. So if that's you today, you want to ask Jesus into your heart. You're not sure that you're a Christian. You're not sure that Jesus is Lord of your life. You're not sure where you would go if you died today. With every eye closed right now, I'm just going to ask you, if that's you today, when I count to three, just put up your hand. One, two, three. You want to give your heart to Jesus today. If that's you, just give me a wave. We're going to say a prayer together. I just feel like God is calling on somebody's heart today. God is checking. There's a burn in your heart. You want to reconnect. You've wandered away. You were like me. You've grown a bit soft and you want to reconnect. If that's you, put up your hand right now. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm looking up top as well. If that's you. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Thank you. Yes, I see that hand. I'm just taking a little bit of time. I've got a little bit of time. It's okay. It's wonderful. That's a couple of hands. Three or four hands. Wonderful. Okay, everybody looking up. Those people who put up their hands, please see someone after. We're going to say a prayer together right now. Everybody say after me. Father in heaven, I love you. You are the Lord of my life. I thank you for sending Jesus to come to planet earth. He lived as a man. He died a cruel death. And he rose from the dead. I now ask you, Jesus, to live in my heart, to be Lord of my life. And I will love you and serve you all the days of my life. I repent for the mistakes I've made, for the sins in my life. I reject you, Satan, and all your works. And I thank you, Jesus, that you guide me every step of the way. 
In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, praise God.